who shakes the whole earth, holy thunder, and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfading love that you would take my place. That you would bear my you lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. So you brings our chaos, you brings our chaos back into order. The orphan, son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of his brilliance, the king of glory, the king of bubble king. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing. Worthy is the Lamb, He's worthy this morning. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King. Conquer the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear. the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned a queen I stand amazed I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned Singing how marvelous, how 
wonderful land my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me for me it was in the garden he prayed on my will but not he had no tears for his own Sweat drops of blood for mine Singing how marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful Is my Savior's love for me In his angels behave sorrows he fought for my soul that night singing how And my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Singing how marvelous, how wonderful that my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love. How marvelous, singing how marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. Ransomed in glory, his face I alas shall see. Twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Sing it again when with. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I alas shall see. To sing of his love for me, singing how marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me, singing how marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me give thanks to the lord our god and king his love endures forever For He is good, He is above all things His love endures forever Sing praise we we'll sing praise with a mighty hand With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm His love endures forever for the life that's been reborn is love and just forever. Sing praise, we'll sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, we'll sing praise, and forever. 
forever God is faithful and forever God is strong and forever God is with us forever forever and forever God is into the setting sun His love endures forever by the grace of God we will carry on His love endures forever we'll sing praise we'll sing praise sing praise we'll sing praise Sing praise and forever God is faithful and forever God is strong and forever God is with us forever and forever God is faithful and forever God is strong Forever God is with us forever 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 you are faithful forever you are strong forever you're with us through the highest the highs and the lowest the lows you remain faithful even when we're faithless, you are faithful, oh God. And so we worship you this morning because you've always been faithful. You will always be faithful. You're so good. You're so good. I just want to um, very quickly mention right at the start this morning about a praise report that it just blew my mind this week when we heard about it. Um, Tina's mum, Wendy, went in for her gallbladder removal and as she, she was told she was high risk. The doctor said, um, touch wood, <laughs> all will be good. Um, when they went down to do the keyhole surgery, the consultant surprisingly found that her gall, gallbladder had shrunk significantly and he felt it was perfectly good and he didn't need to remove it. <laughs> Tina, 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 prior to this and during her mum going down, Tina was praying that this would happen and, and she was absolutely blown away as was her mother and she wants to thank you for the prayers but listen this is the God we serve and this is the God who is here this morning amongst us and he he, he just lavishes us with his love and 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 we're just gonna we're just gonna sing through um, this one more time and we're gonna sing it with hearts full of faith so whatever's going on in your world at the minute your situation just cry out to God and believe that he can touch you and meet your every need because he can and he will. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, and forever God is with us forever, and forever God is faithful. God is strong and forever God is with us forever forever we'll sing praise we'll sing praise we'll sing praise We'll sing praise, sing praise. 
We just thank you this morning as we come together as a community to worship and glorify your name. Lord, we praise your name on high. We lift your name on high, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you care about every single area of our lives, Lord. Lord, we're excited this morning to come together for a phase in the morning. We're excited, Lord, to, to look at what has happened, Lord, and what is going to happen soon. Lord, we just get excited, Lord, knowing that you're in the middle of it all, Lord, and we just praise and worship and glorify your name, Lord. Lord, I thank you so much for this good news about, uh, about Tina's mom, Lord. And we just praise your name and we glorify your name, Lord. And we thank you also, Lord, for, for, for Louise's father, who's, who's also doing so much better. Lord, we just praise your name and we glorify your name, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you now this morning to come and just move in this place. Move through this place, Lord, and meet people's needs, Lord. We just love you and we glorify your name, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're just going to continue praising and worshiping. We're going to sing another song. And as we do that, we're going to lift our tithes and offerings. And just as the containers are being passed around, if you're not from Lakeside and you're not prepared, just let them go past you. Um, there's, there's things that are up on the, on the, behind me on the wall that will tell you different ways that you can participate if you want to.
We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah. Now forever He is glorified, forever He is living. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your presence this morning, Lord. We just thank you for your presence, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. We're just gonna we're gonna take a moment to just uh, say hello to each other and do our minute mingle. So, if you just wanna make sure you can say hello to as many people as possible. If you want to be looking to take your seats, that would be really good. Really, it's great to see you all this morning. 
anyone listening? Just give me a wave if you can hear me. Person who's still busy chatting next door, give them a gentle little loving nudge. <laughs> really is great to see you all this morning. Can we just show our appreciation to the band for, for leading us? And Don't we have a talented pastor in Mark, not only great preaching, but great at leading worship as well. Nick wasn't well, Nick was down to be doing it, so Matt stepped in uh, this morning to do that. What a great job he's done, so Matt, thank you so, so much. Leading us so well. I just want to share a few notices with you, and then anyone that's involved in the children's work, you can leave, but the young people, you're going to be staying in this morning, so uh, it's... uh, great to have you in here with us but uh, first of all if you're a guest here today maybe it's your first time here to Lakeside and uh, we just want to say massive thank you to you for choosing to come and spend a few hours here with us this morning as you came in you should have received one of our little welcome brochures tells you about who we are all the different things taking place and with that you should have had one of these blue cards that just says leading others into life and on the reverse side of that it says I'm new here we'd love you to fill that in it's not so we can stalk you or anything like that but we'd love to write out and just say thank you so much for being here with us and in response for that you're going to get not this lakeside pen oh yes but the new lakeside pen oh If you are a guest, excuse all the others, they don't get out that often, and so this is the highlight of their week where they get to applaud the, the, the new Lakeside Pen. Who would like one? You can't, you're not new here. <laughs> who would like an old one who hasn't got one? Carol's hand was up there. There you go. Fill that in and we'd love, to, we'd love to write out and we can hand one of these pens to you afterwards. I'm guarding this one because I know what you lot are like. <laughs> Let me just go through a few notices with you if I can. And uh, first of all, that tonight is the, the Alpha course that's taking place. It's uh, week two. So this is the last opportunity to still sign up to Alpha if we can just bring those up for us. Uh, This is the last opportunity to sign up to this course uh, that's currently running. The next one's going to be starting in uh, September. Uh, We've got John Archer provisionally booked in to come and help us with our launch night. If you remember John from Britain's Got Talent, we've got John to come and help us with that. So you'll hear more details around that as time goes on. And uh, then next Saturday, we've got the Christian Life and Witness course taking place. I know some of you have been asking us whether or not the event is still taking place in June with the Franklin Graham tour. As far as we know, it's still going ahead. We've been in touch with them. They've been contacting us. I know there's been issues there with the MS Bank Arena. And so they're working through that, but the, the tour is still going ahead. And next Saturday is definitely still going ahead. This is an incredible opportunity to come along and just be trained and equipped, gain more confidence, a little bit more courage and boldness in your own personal witnessing, something that's uh, so important for each one of us. It's opened up to other churches across the town as well. Guys, I can't encourage you enough to, to try and be here next Saturday for it. It's just for three hours. The material that you get is first class. The training that you'll get will be first class as well from the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, the team that are coming for that. So just for three hours next Saturday, you don't have to register, just turn up but I'd suggest get here early to make sure that you get a seat sorted for that. So 10 o'clock to one o'clock next Saturday, really encourage you to be here for that. And then of course, next Sunday, we've got our our, our next baptismal service at the moment. We've got a couple of people who've said that they're wanting to be baptized. If you are here, if you're a believer by that, you've put your faith in Jesus, but you've never yet been through the waters of baptism. It's really important that you do that next step in your faith to do that and uh, we'd love to chat with you over that so there's some details in reception in relation to what baptism is what it symbolizes etc but then this coming tuesday at seven o'clock just for that hour before our tuesday night prayer meeting we're having a, a meeting for all those who are interested those who've said so far they want to be baptized And uh, just going through some of the practicalities for next Sunday itself. So that's next Tuesday, or this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock to uh, be here for that. And then in two weeks' time, 
We're, we're starting a new sermon series. It's going to run for three weeks. We're calling it Hey Siri. If you've got a, an Apple phone, you'll know exactly what that means. If you've got a, a, an Android one, it'll be OK Google or something like that. So often we look to, to our phone like we can, if we're wanting some, some, some information at our fingertips, we'll just say, Hey Siri, I'm conscious that my watch or something might start going off as I'm doing that. But uh, like we'll ask our phones or we'll ask Alexa or someone like that for answers. But what happens when it comes to questions regarding our faith? Some of the bigger issues of life. Who is it we go to? Where do we look for the answers? And so what we want to do for this series, it's a little bit different to what we'd normally do. We want you to choose the content. Okay, we want you to choose the content for us. If you've received the weekly email, you know all about this. You'll have seen it on there. But we're asking you to contact us over the next week or so just to put in some of your questions. Maybe what are the questions that you'd love to know? What does the Bible say about such and such? Those questions that you'd love to know the answers to, but might, might be a little bit too afraid to ask. Contact us, let us know what they are, and we will do our best to include those as part of this series. It's going to be a smorgasbord of theology, and if we don't know the answer, we're going to ask Donald. Because <laughs> Donald got a first class honours in his theological degree. We won't go down that again, but... <laughs> so if we don't know the answers, Donald hopefully will. It should be, hey Donald, shouldn't it really? Not, not hey, <laughs> hey Siri. But please do that, write in to us. See, my, my iPad's just gone off here now with that. Okay, that's starting in two weeks' time. But then next Sunday also, I've mentioned the baptismal service, but next Sunday as well, this beautiful looking troop of ladies fly out this time next Sunday. Hopefully they will, well, they'll just be taking off from Manchester Airport as they fly to Cambodia on the mission trip. And uh, I was going to say, well, we are going to pray for them, but please pray for me at home with the kids and the dog. Uh, for all the other husbands, for Andy at home with his kids and his dog as well, and Dave at home with his dogs and everyone else who's left at home. In fact, forget them, just pray for us, okay? <laughs> Ladies, if you're going there, come and join us because we really want to pray for you. We're not going to have the opportunity to do it next Sunday because you'll be at the airport. But uh, just, let's just give them a round of applause, those that are going next Sunday. So for some of them, it's their first time and uh, we're really looking forward to all that God's going to do amongst them as they, uh, as they head off next weekend. Leanne's already away, so she's going to be flying from Skopje into Phnom Penh on her own and all that. But just reach out your hands if you're comfortable with that. Father, we just thank you for these amazing ladies. We thank you that, uh, Lord, you've put it on their heart, Lord, to, to be involved in this trip. Thank you for the way that you've provided for them to go. Lord, we know for Esther, it's going to be so sweet, Lord, going back and being reunited with the team in Cambodia. But Lord, we're asking that you will not only give them safe traveling mercies there and back and everywhere in between, but Father, you would use them mightily, that Lord, you would do something in their hearts, Lord, and that you would use them to be an incredible blessing to not just the ladies there and the girls in B3, but the whole team in Cambodia as they travel those 6,000 miles to be with them. Lord, will you bless them? Will you keep them in great health whilst they're there? Father, will you use them mightily for your glorious name's sake, we pray, that your kingdom purposes might be established more and more through them over those coming uh, weeks. And uh, Lord, we're asking that, uh, Lord, you will bring them back safely with stories of how you've done the most amazing things. And so bless them use them, encourage them, we pray. And Lord, we do pray for all those of us who are left home, left at home. Lord, uh, just help us as well. Give us grace and patience, we pray. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Can I just say in relation to that as well, some of you will know that uh, over the few weeks of, of, of the past weeks leading up to um, the ladies going, that little Rebecca O'Loughlin has been selling a water in reception so they can take it. Do you know, we got handed yesterday by, by Mike and Suzanne. She's raised 250 US dollars to take. That is just, how amazing is that? That's going to go towards the work of, of, of B3. How awesome is that? When you see Rebecca, 
Give her a massive high five, will you? Just really encourage her, because that is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Last thing, and then we're going to come around uh, the stuff that we really want to share in terms of vision. If you get the weekly email, you'll have had the uh, annual report sent out. So there's uh, 40 odd pages there of all the things that have taken place over the past years, the different ministries that flow out of Lakeside week in, week out. There's the reports there from the leaders. So uh, if you haven't got a copy of those, if you don't get the email, number one, you should. <laughs> uh, so have a chat with us. We can make sure that you get put onto that, that database. But there are some uh, printed copies of this available in reception as well afterwards if you haven't got one. So you can take hold of that and uh, have a look through everything that's on there. And we can take questions on that a little bit later on. Normally when it comes to things like the AGM and things like we do it in the, uh, in the evening, but I know it's always... Uh, it isn't always possible for, for, uh, for everyone to be there because of other things taking place in Alpha. And so we wanted to combine that in that sense with uh, our vision morning this morning. We thought this is the best opportunity to really share some of the things. We're not going to go over the report things. They're in there for you to have a look at. But we do want to talk about vision this morning. We want to talk and, and bring some updates as to where we're at and some of the things that we're looking in, into. And I don't know about you, but for me, I get really excited when we talk about vision. I really get excited when we talk about vision. Because I think it's that reminder again, isn't it? It, it? It's that invitation from heaven for us to begin to remind ourselves of who God is, but more importantly, how big he, he is, that for him there's nothing that's too difficult, there's nothing that's impossible, the scriptures teach that. And it's an invitation from heaven for us to just dream again a little bit, or maybe a lot, as to what some of the things are might be that, 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 that God is calling us into. Where we don't limit him in any way. Yes. Where we don't do him a disservice by dreaming small, but for us to dream big. Yes. How many of you know that God's called us to dream a big dream? Yes. Where we believe for, for way more than perhaps we think is possible in the natural to create space for him to come and move and show his glory and demonstrate his power and his majesty. And as a church, we have a big dream. We're carrying a big vision. I've said many times to you over the number of years that I've been leading that our vision isn't lakeside. It's not about maintaining a building or simply looking after the things that we have already, as important as those things are. Our vision is Southport and the surrounding area. It's a much bigger vision we want to see it transformed it's a vision that's too big for us to achieve in our own strength or our own ability it's one that we need and where we rely on more to the point God's enabling and God's anointing to see this come to pass because we want to see our town and this area come alive to the reality of who God is don't we oh that was really poor church we want to see our town and the 100,000 or so people within it come alive to the reality of who God is and how much he loves them. And for all people, everyone say all people. All people to know how much he loves them. And just like we've been reminded of in our recent series, what really matters is we've kicked off this new year together that we want to be a church who are all in so that we can go all out to reach people with this message. As our vision statement says, you'll see it plastered around the building and on our stuff. We want to lead others into life. That's what we're about. We believe that life doesn't truly begin until you have Jesus right at the very center. And so we want to lead other people into life. And so I'm not going to bring you a new vision this morning. Just because it's the vision morning, this isn't a new vision that we've got to bring you. The vision remains the same. I don't know if we've got the, the slides up for us. If you can get them up, please. But the vision remains the same, that we want to reach new people with the gospel. That we want to see them. We want to, to help them become fully devoted followers of Jesus. We want to make disciples who make disciples of others. We're a, a missional church. That's right at the very heart, right at the very root of who we are and what we do. We are a missional people. I said before that our town consists of around 100,000 people. And across the churches combined, we estimate, and this is probably a, a generous estimation, that there would be around 2,000 born-again, spirit-filled believers in our town. 
That means that 98,000 people plus, or to put it another way, 98% of our town don't yet know him. To me, that tells me, that reminds me that we have such a huge mission field outside our building here, outside the doors of our homes and the places where we work and that God has personally placed and handpicked each one of us to be his hands, his feet and his mouthpiece to those people around us. You see, you and me are his plan A. Just turn around and have a look. This is as good as it gets, folks. Give the person a nudge and tell, say to them, he's talking to you. You are God's plan A for this town. And so tell them, don't hold back, but jump right in, feet first, head first, face first, and just go for it. Just go for it. Don't hold back. See, the Christian life is supposed to be an adventure, isn't it? Let me say that again, because I don't think you heard me. The Christian life is supposed to be an adventure. It's that joy of when we share our faith and we see people come alive to the reality of who God is. That's an adventure. Where we see God turn up in the most unexpected ways, in the most unexpected places, and very often times with the most unexpected people. Again, just look around. (laughs) That's an adventure, isn't it? That's what we're called to do, to to reach new people, to make disciples of other people. But we also want our Sunday gatherings to be incredible times of worship and celebration and encouragement, what you might call irresistible Sundays, where the unchurched love to attend and then come back. So on one hand, we're missional, but we also want to be attractional. People say, what kind of church are you? Are you an attractional church or are you a missional church? For me, it's not a case of either or. It's a case of both and. When we come together, and we'll always give an opportunity for people to hear the gospel. This is why it's so important that we think about how we can invite people, how we can bring them along. That you know one thing you can be guaranteed of is that each week they will hear the gospel. They will have an opportunity to respond to the gospel. So we want to be a missional church, we want to be attractional with our our Sundays, uh, 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 places where the unchurched love to attend, but we also want to help you get connected with others, whether that's serving on a team through the week or whether it's being part of one of our life groups through the week, it's so important that as a fellowship that we're connecting with one another. I came across this lovely quote this week, just in an article I was reading. It says, loneliness is a feeling, but isolation is a choice. Loneliness is a feeling, but isolation is a choice. And we want to do everything that we can to combat those feelings of loneliness. We know that is a major epidemic in our society today and in our world. And as the church, we should not allow that to happen to us. Because we've got environments and opportunities and avenues where people can get connected with others. Because how many of you believe that life is better when we do it together? Yeah. When we've got people around us supporting us and encourages, encouraging us, etc. Now we love what God is currently doing amongst us. We're a good sized church. If everyone turned up on a Sunday who would call Lakeside their home, we would not be far short of 400 people. There's about 365 to 370 And that continues to to, to fluctuate up and sometimes down. But an average Sunday attendance would be around 265. And so we're a good-sized church. And, you know, it would be easy to settle for that. It would be easy to settle for that, but we won't. Because it's not about numbers for numbers' sake. We're not interested in being the biggest church in the town. Our mandate is to be the best church for our town that we can be. And be the people that God has called us to be. And for me, there's a big difference with that. This is what we're called to be. Now, we know that what we have here is good. We have good worship. We have good teaching. That's a really good place to say amen this morning. (laughs) We have good kids and youth work. We have a good coffee house. Please pray for the coffee machine. It packed up this morning with a coffee house without a coffee machine. That's not good. So uh, 
Let's pray we can get that sorted. We have great facilities. So we've got lots of really good things taking place and we thank God for each one of them. But you know, the truth is our setup, the way that we do Sundays, our services, the way that we do things around here, not just on Sundays, but through the week, are all geared to get the results that we're currently getting. Just think about that. The model that we have, the way that we do stuff, is perfectly set up to get the results that we're currently getting. And the truth is, the harsh reality is that people aren't banging down the doors week in, week out, asking us the question, what must I do to be saved? It's hardly a Sunday goes by where we don't get visitors here with us for whatever reason. And if you're here today as a guest, we really do welcome you amongst us. If you're looking for a church to be a part of, we'd love to have that conversation with you. But the truth is, people aren't banging down their doors, are they, to, to ask, what must I do to be saved? It's not true. That's, that's true for me. My guess is that it's true for you as well, whether you're at work or whether you're at home. So either the gospel doesn't work or we have to keep reviewing what we're doing and make the necessary adjustments and the changes in order that we can go and reach people with God's love because we believe the gospel works. We believe the gospel transforms lives. And it's the truth, isn't it, that if we always do what we've always done, guess what? We'll always get what we've always got. And so if we want to reach new people, we've got to look at doing some new things. We've got to continually be reviewing how we do things. The message always stays the same. The message never, ever changes. That God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The message never, ever changes. But the means by which we communicate that message has to continually be reviewed and changed in order to meet the different needs within our society and the cultures that we have within it. And the great commission that Jesus gave us directs everything that we do. And we want to take his words literally and do that. To go. Go and make disciples of all nations. We know that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And so we want to reflect him in exactly the same way. Now, we already do this in part. We've got our Love Southport Town Centre Outreach that takes place on a Saturday, once a month on a, on, on a Saturday. We've got nine slots that the council have given us for this year. Let me tell you, that did not come easy to get those nine slots, but we have the prime location right in the centre of Chapel Street for that. We want to take full advantage of that opportunity that we have. If you want to be part of that, come and chat with us. There's your own personal evangelism that takes place. And we thank you for that. And you know, this is why things like next Saturday, the Christian Life and Witness class is so important so that you can just be equipped again further to, to enable you to, to reach out to those people around you, to give you more confidence in sharing your story with others. And you know, outreach is very high on the agenda here. Our Tuesday, morning, our Tuesday evening rather prayer meetings are purposefully, specifically for lost, for the lost people, for those friends and families, those work colleagues, where we pray for our town and really encourage you to, to come along to those. Because I really believe with all of my heart that the measure to which we are prepared as a community to pray and to sacrifice and to put God first will be the measure by which we see him move in the days to come. And so the ball is very much in our court. We know what God says that he will do if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their way, uh, the wicked ways and seek his face. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. And so God has told us what he will do, but he's just looking for us to play our part. You've heard me say that many times and you'll keep hearing me say that time and time again because scripture is true. God's word is true and God is always true to his word. And so we can believe him for that. Now, if you were here in June of last year when we held our last vision morning through the year, you'll know that I said from 2020 to 2030, our goal is to become one church in five locations. That was what we'd said as a 10-year as a vision for us moving ahead. 
And that's going to require us, isn't it, very much to, to go, just like the Great Commission tells us, to go to where people are at. And the way for us to do that is to begin establishing other communities and other works around our town to embark on this mission and this project of church planting. And I'm so excited by this because it enables us, it, it means that we keep in mission and outreach right at the very heart and the center of who we are and all that we do. And so one church in, in five locations over the next 10 years, is that doable? I think so. As long as we get your buy-in and your involvement. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard work. And it's going to require increased sacrifices and commitment of time and energy and resources and finances. All those things are needed and needed in abundance because at the end of the day, what greater cause could any of us ever give these things towards than serving King Jesus and partnering with him in the Great Commission of seeing other people come to the understanding and the realization of who he is and how much he loves them. There's no greater cause that we can give our lives to. There's no greater cause that we can give our resources to than serving Jesus and his great commission. So one church in five locations. Now we already have one location. That's here. So you could say that we're already ahead of the game. <laughs> and we can just sit back for the next couple of years because hey, we don't need to look at doing anything else because we're already on track for what we want to do. Technically by 2024 is when we need to have the second one in place, but we don't want to wait till then, do we? <laughs> now, this time last year, we were in talks with, with Woodvale Chapel, as you know, about taking them on. They came to us, asking us for help. Sadly, through the year, they decided to pull the plug on that. But again, as I shared last June, it started something within us, just, just, just began to burn and even greater fire within our hearts as a leadership team of what could be, what could be. And so as a, as a leadership team, we meet together once a month and sometimes in between, depending on the need. But we've been talking and we've been praying this through for a number of months now regarding where do we plant? What premises are available? What might these, these church plants look like? Who will lead them? All these kind of questions. And apart from that first question of where, all the others are really practical questions. And I'm really excited to share with you this morning the location of our first church plant, which is in effect our second location, because we're serious about pursuing this. You ready for this? Yes. Should I really get a drum roll, shouldn't I, Josh? Come back up. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, this is where it's going to be. In yes. banks. <laughs> Lindsay's from Banks. She lives in Banks. It's that little village just five miles up the road that has around 5,000 people or so that's growing. Houses being built there all the time. We've got a handful of people already within the church who are already involved. And playing a key role in what God is doing there with the Christians amongst the village. And for some time, things have been happening there with, with Christians getting together and praying together. They've been connecting with their villagers. They've had the prayer and a pint at the new Fleetwood pub that they've been doing. They've been meeting together weekly, sometimes every morning to pray for their village. And as a church, we've been investing into that already. We've been helping get promo stuff for them invest in, in into all that stuff uh, we've got some of them who, are, who have come through and are involved in our current alpha course that's taking place and i know some of those from within our fellowship who who live up in banks have been asking us for some time I'm not quite linking it akin to the macedonian call come over to us but they have been saying is there any chance that we could look to establish something in our village and over the past weeks, the past few weeks, 
We've been having meetings with other church leaders already situated there in banks, and so this is nothing new to them. And uh, those meetings have gone really well, and they've been really accommodating towards us. And long story short, they're looking forward to us coming and working with them and uh, together to see God's kingdom come more and more in the village, which is a fantastic start. You don't always get that. And that's really encouraging. And so church, it's all systems go. <laughs> it's out there now. There's no, there's no going back. And here's the really exciting bit. We don't have all that long before it starts. <laughs> there's no point hanging around, is there? If we're going to do it, let's just go for it. Time is short. Let me tell you exactly where we're going to be meeting. We've secured the Banks Leisure Centre to hire their rooms. The amazing thing is that the time that we're going to be doing it on a Sunday, we've pretty much got the whole building <laughs> to ourselves already, getting the signs just to replace that one, Lakeside Church Banks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we've got pretty much the whole of the building. It's going to be Sunday afternoons from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Okay, we don't want to do anything at the same time as the other churches already when they're meeting there. We don't want to be seen as any competitive threat in that way. We want to come in and go purely for the unchurched and the dechurched in the village. So four o'clock to five o'clock, just an hour long service is what we're initially looking at, serving drinks afterwards. And, and the launch weekend is the third, fourth and fifth of April. I said that doesn't give us much time. That's Palm Sunday, the 5th of April, which will be the first proper Sunday meeting. So we've got Gary Gibbs, who's our National Evangelistic Director. Gary's agreed to come up. Some of you might remember him from about 18 months ago. Gary came and spoke here. Gary's going to come and do the Friday night and the Saturday night. We've got a couple of interest meetings for that to launch it. And then he'll be speaking here on the Sunday morning and then speaking over at Banks, Lakeside Church Banks on the Sunday afternoon, which we're really excited, but there is lots and lots to be getting on with, and we need you to get involved. So a key date for your diary is Sunday the 16th of February, in just a few weeks' time at five o'clock, we're holding an interest meeting for all those who would like to become part of what we call in the launch team. Now, we know we've been working on some, uh, some of this stuff, that we know that we need a minimum of 24 people. We need a minimum of 24 people, but ideally we'd like to get at least 40. That way then we can look to rotate some people, maybe week on, week off, etc. But the bigger team that we can get to help launch it, the better, the easier, and the less pressure it will become. And sometimes a crowd it draws a crowd, doesn't it? And so it would be good to, to have a really good number to, to start off with. We need band members. We need the kids and youth workers. We need greeters. We need people to do the PA and the AV. We need people to serve teas and coffees. All the usual stuff that we do. We want to take what we have here and we want to begin to, to plant that. Our DNA, our culture, our way of doing things up there in banks. And we're beginning work on promo stuff for a leaflet drop across all of the homes and to change the website and all those things. And undoubtedly, I'm sure there's going to be lessons that we'll learn from this. There's going to be, um, <clears throat> what do you call it, those teething problems, I'm, I'm sure, which is all part of the process, isn't it? Yes. We're not saying we've got all this worked out. We've been picking the brains of other leaders of the churches that we're in uh, relationship with who've been doing this. And uh, so we can be as best prepared as possible. We're trying to do our homework as much as we can on this. But we're having a go. A little bit like Jonathan and his armor bearer. You know that story, 1 Samuel 14? They're there and there's the Philistine outpost. And uh, there's just Jonathan and his armor bearer, just with one sword and one shield between them. And he turns to his armor bearer and says, let's go and attack the Philistine outpost. Maybe the Lord's in this. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't. Just the two of them against five or six hundred men. That was a bit of a gamble, wasn't it? On the fact that maybe <laughs> the Lord's in this. Guess what? Maybe he wasn't. And that only meant one thing for Jonathan and his armor bearer then. But God was in it. And they had a go. And I believe God wants us to have a go. 
Time is short. We can't just sit back and do nothing. But we've got to go and make disciples. We've got to go to where people are at. We can't just sit and wait for them to come to us. As good as what we have here is, we've got to go to where they're at because the time is short and the need is great. And so we're going to go and just maybe, just maybe, the Lord is in this. And just maybe we could be on the cusp of seeing scores of people beginning to find new life through Jesus Christ. Now we're working on all of this stuff. We're working on a training structure to get everyone prepared. But as I said before, this can only happen. This will only have any great amount of success, a chance of success, if you are prepared to get involved. If you are prepared and willing to sacrifice your time and other things that you might often do on a Sunday afternoon to consider being part of, the, of, of us helping other people find Jesus. And we'll share more of that at that meeting on the 16th. So so please make note of that in your diary. I'm asking you to go away and to to pray about this. Is this something that God is calling you to be involved with? Excited? We've got some more exciting things to share. I'm going to invite Paul to come up. If you've got the, the handheld mic there for Paul. Let's give Paul some encouragement. It's been our delight to to welcome Paul on board uh, since the start of January and just settled into the role so well, doing an absolutely fantastic job working with our young people and leading them and the team forward. And so Paul's got just a, a couple of things he wants to share in relation to that. Yeah, so just another date for your diary. So if you just want to get your phones out, I just want to encourage you to actually put this in your phone already. So it is the following Sunday from this. So it is Sunday the 23rd of February. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a kids and youth vision night. And you might be sitting there right now thinking, does that involve me? Well, I want to encourage every single person in the room here today to come along Because the reality of it is we sometimes sit there and think that the young people are the church of tomorrow. But I really, really believe that the young people are the church of today. And we are here as church and we want to support and encourage our young people to take up the mandate that they've been given just as well as us. So as we sit there and think, I just get really encouraged by just looking at Jesus a little bit. Hopefully you do too. Because Jesus, I would say, was an outstanding youth worker. Because he took a group of 12 lads who were probably around the ages of 13 to 17. He did life with them. And in doing life with them, he saw them transform the whole of the world. The reason why we're sitting here today is because of what those 12 lads did. And I sit there and I think, it's the same Holy Spirit that lives in the young people of here today in Lakeside. So I'm not going to put a limit on our young people. I really hope that you won't neither. But the reason why I'm inviting you to this is because we're going to be sharing how we're going to facilitate our young people to be all that they can be. And you may be sitting there going, well, still, that sounds great for the parents. That sounds great for the young people. Where do I stand in that? Where you stand in that is I want you to come along and find out what we're doing and support it. I want you to come along and pray along with us because prayer is powerful. Okay? And I also believe that every single person in the room can be involved in youth work in some way or another. It's not about how old you are. It's not about how cool you are. It's not about if you've got a qualification in it neither. Okay? But it's just because if you love young people, okay, you can participate in this too. And, what I, and if you're sitting there and you're questioning this, okay, I'd really encourage you to come along because what I'm going to be doing is telling you loads and loads of different ways about how you can get involved in doing some kids in youth work, how you can actually play a role in seeing our young people be all that they can be. So yeah, great. So hopefully you've got that in your phones already because I didn't see much movement on that. So it's the 23rd of February. Great. Don't know about you, but I am so excited already about everything that's been said. Um, You've already heard um, that everything we do is to play our part in fulfilling the Great Commission locally, but also overseas. 
Um, Elam Missions has 50 different mission fields or around about that at the minute. And what they want is churches to, to buy into individual um, countries. And we are so blessed as a church, as you know already, to be a big part of what's happening in Cambodia. Um, and, you know, Esther and I are so, so thankful. So thankful because it's so close to our hearts, as you know. And it was a big part of us even ending up here. And I just want to thank you from both of us and from Pastor Tim Napanita for being a church that passionately um, gets involved, gives to the work of Cambodia and to missions. Um, you're very, very generous as a church. We are very generous as a church, not you, we are very generous as a church towards missions. Um, and trust me, as a former missionary, you, you need just to understand how much pressure that lifts off us as missionaries, because as missionaries, when you're out there and you're, you're, you, have nowhere, you don't know where the money's going to come from or this is going to come from, and you have a church that loves you, prays for you, and gives unconditionally and regularly, it just helps you so much to do the work and see God's blessing in everything that we do. Just a note on that, in June we'll be doing a special offering um, for, on Mission Sunday for the work of Cambodia, but we'll tell you much more about that um, as it comes. Um, closer. But we're not just a given church, we're also a going church, and that really is exciting too. And again, that is such a blessing to the missionaries and to Pastor Chimnap and Danita and the team out there. When we send teams, it helps them and encourages them, it blesses them, but it also um, lets the people that go be developed as well. So, so as we go, and as the six ladies head off this week, um, they'll go off with a heart to give and to, to bless. But trust me, each and every one of them will be, we will be blessed as much and will come back touched and moved in, in a different way. And yes, what Pastor Richard said earlier on is true. We need prayer, those that are left behind. And, and I just want to say, I just want to clarify one thing. My wife feels that I'm not going to be able to clothe myself, um, <laughs> feed myself, and many other things. So I'm just going to stay in the house for three weeks because I, I don't want anybody to see me. Um, you know, it's just could be. But what I would like to say, and I'm sorry for going off track for one second. There was a picture earlier on of the six ladies. I noticed, and this was taken a few days ago, that Esther's wearing exactly the same clothes today. <laughs> So, so she cannot, she cannot, she cannot say that I am not capable of looking after myself. That's all I'm saying. Okay, sorry about that. So getting back to a very important thing, and it was in the, it was in the Lakeside Life, and, and, and if you look at, it, look at your Lakeside Life, you'll see this. But there's a second trip going out at the end of June, at the start of July. Myself and Pastor Richard are leading that team, and we're having an interest meeting on Sunday the 23rd. Get your phones out, put the 23rd in your phone, at 5 p.m. prior to the youth. So you can come to both things and, and find out what's happening. But seriously, we have a team going. If you want to have a really life-changing experience, sign up. Come along for the information night on the, on the 23rd at 5 p.m. Finally, I just want to say, first of all, we're very blessed as a church to have Janet Brothwell and, and the, she has been a missions champion for years for this church. And, and Esther and I personally appreciated her so, so much and, and, and just absolutely love being involved with her. And, and she's not going away anywhere, I just want to point that out. But Esther and I, as two missionaries, we have such a passion for missions that, we have, that we're joining up with Janet and we're going to be um, just doing so many more things towards missions. We're going, to, we're going to lift the profile of missions in the church. And we're going to um, also be doing lots of fundraising and everything. And to do that, we need to build a team. So again, um, we want to encourage you. This, I just very quickly wrote down the job description. A heart for missions. Willing to help do some fundraising. I'm not scared of a bit of hard work at times. If that's you, come and join us as we look to raise the profile of missions, praying and fundraising, primarily for Cambodia, but also for other things within the 50 Elam mission fields worldwide. Please 
If you have a heart for the, that sort of stuff and you want to be involved, speak to either Esther, Janet, or myself. And we are excited as a church to be getting even more involved in whatever area we can within missions. Morning. Morning, morning. Can I just say just very quickly that I know my name was mentioned of stepping in this morning, but there's a big team behind that. The guys had to change their songs. The guys on the PA desk and the AV had to change a whole thing because I am a diva to the core. So can I, can I just ask that you show appreciation to the guys in the band and the PA desk as well? Uh, thank you. Bringing us back a, a slightly closer to home, I want to just briefly talk about our, our coffee house for a moment. And you'll agree that we have an incredible facility upstairs. That, that view is breathtaking at times. And we're blessed alongside that view to have a great team of, of people upstairs who work heart and soul to make it a really welcoming and homely place. But we also recognize that in terms of practicalities, it probably isn't doing as well as, as we'd have hoped or we'd like or that it has the potential to be doing. And so as a, as a leadership team, we recognize that then at that point, things need to change and some things need to, to happen. And we've been in the process of rebranding and, and remake over it. As you can imagine, a group of guys trying to do a makeover. It, it, picture it for a moment. It's not the prettiest of sights. Dave can't dress himself. It looks like he can't shave, but I can't say anything either. <laughs> but for, for some time now, for, for well over a year, we've wanted to link the, the coffee house with the work that happens in Cambodia in, in, with the Be Free uh, mission, uh, Be Free ministry there. And uh, so the plan is to, to rebrand our, our coffee house as the, the Be Free coffee house. So you'll see the logo here. So that's exciting. So. Mainly, it's, it's kind of a three-pronged attack, really. So we wanted to line it up with, with the Be Free work in Cambodia and telling the story of what happens there and, and how we can support that. We also want to link it up quite locally because you, you may or may not be aware that there is, is trafficking and sex trafficking that happens on our doorstep. This happens in the place that we live and it can't happen in our time. There has to be a stand that we need to make that says this is not okay and we're gonna do something about it. So part of, of Be Free will be internationally looking at the Be Free ministry, but also locally about raising awareness of, of what happens in our town as well. And thirdly, we want it to be a place where people find freedom in Christ. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free, no longer to be slaves or subject to slavery. It's for freedom. And so we want the, the coffee house to have that atmosphere that, that people can ask questions and people can feel comfortable, but a place where they find life. As, as we've said already this morning, a place that can lead others into life as well. So over the next coming months, we're gonna be working on advertising and, and, and social media. So keep an eye out for that as well. But please, like we've said with everything, please could we ask that you pray we want to, obviously we want to see profits go up because that means we can do more things and we can give more. And the reason we get is to give. We are blessed to be a blessing. And so we want to pray into that, pray for the team, pray for, for all aspects of it as well. But can I encourage you to use the coffee house? Use the Be Free coffee house. If you're having a meeting as part of work, use it. The, there is Wi-Fi, there's a great view, there's great coffee if the coffee machine's fixed. There's great homemade cakes, there's great food, there's a great atmosphere. Use it for meetings, use it to meet your friends, use it to come and relax, use it as a, as a real hub of, of, of your life if you want to as well. And I will be there for cake if you want me to be. <laughs> well, please pray, but we uh, keep your eyes out over the next coming months for the launch of the, the Be Free Coffee House. Matt, Dave and, and Paul there and on that evening of the 23rd, Leanne's going to be talking about the kids' work as well. So, you know, we've got a great team of people who are overseeing the ministries here at the church. We are incredibly blessed, Lakeside. You know that, don't you? Thank you. <laughs> Excited about where we're heading? Yes. So are we expectant for 
what's ahead? Yes. Are you up for the challenge? Yes. And to get stuck in and play your part? Yes. I was looking for a slightly more positive response there with that. But you know, that, that word challenge is a, is a key word. Because there are challenges that, that lay ahead for us. I can remember a couple of years ago, I was, uh, I was down in London. And as everyone does when you're down in London, you, you tend to use the underground, don't you, to get around. And I remember being at one of the stations and just standing there just on the platform waiting for the train to come in. And just as it began to make its way into the, uh, the station there, a, a voice came over the tannoy just saying, mind the gap. Mind the gap. In other words, it was telling me to be, to be conscious of that gap that existed from between the edge of the platform where I was standing and to the train itself that I wanted to get on. In other words, there was a gap that existed from the place that I was to the place that I needed to be. And you know, when we talk about vision, there's always a gap. Or at least there has to be. There has to be a gap. A little bit like the gap that existed between the platform to the train. There's a gap that exists between where we currently are and where we need to be or where we want to be, that, that, that preferred future, that preferred place that we're talking about. The question is, how big is that gap? You see, I believe it has to be a gap big enough that we can't fill or fulfill simply in our own being or by our own ability. We have to create space for God to come and move and for things like faith and trust to be demonstrated and to be exercised. It's also a gap that I believe requires things like sacrifice and commitment to be demonstrated on our part too. Without that gap, then there's no place for those things to happen. And we just carry on and we do things in our own strength. But how many of you know that when we try and do God's work in man's strength, nothing really happens? Because with it all, we can't just sit back and expect God to come and fill the gap without us doing the things that we have to play our part in. It doesn't work like that, does it? You know, when Moses and the Israelites left Egypt, they came to this big expanse of water that was ahead of them with Pharaoh's army right on their tails. And they had no way of crossing. That was a big gap. When Elijah came to the widow's house looking to be fed, by the lady who had nothing in the house except a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil that she was about to prepare her last meal before her and her son, in her own words, would then just sit back and die. There was a gap. When David stepped out to fight Goliath, the gap might only have been a few feet of difference in height, but how many of you know it was a big enough gap that David couldn't defeat Goliath in his own strength. Yeah. There was a gap. Yeah. When the disciples were faced with a situation where thousands of people needed feeding after being out with them all day, and all they had between them was a little boy's packed lunch, there was a gap. Four different scenarios, four areas where people needed God to, to step in and do something amazing and miraculous, and for his power to be displayed. And for each of them, in each one of them, I think it was pretty much the same question that God asked each of those people in those situations. He said, what's in your hand? What's in your heart? What's in your house? For Moses, it was a staff. For the widow, it was some empty jars. For David, it was a few stones and a sling. For the disciples, it was the little boys, pat lunch. But God was asking them the question, what is it that you have that I can use? Now in each of those things, the staff, the jars, the, the sling, and the boys pat lunch, it wasn't much by comparison when you consider the gap that was before each of them. But here's the amazing thing. It was more than enough for God to put his hand and his favor and his blessing upon to bring about multiplication and deliverance in each one of those four different scenarios. And there's others that we could mention if we had the time this morning. And a really important thing, I think, here 
is that with each one, they each had something God could use. That was the important thing. Each of them had something that God could use. I haven't been upstairs yet since I first came in this morning, but my guess and my hope is that as we make our way up there, after we've finished here in a little while, and after we've had some drinks, that we sit down to, to share lunch together, that there's going to be more than enough for everyone to eat. That as we've each brought our part, and perhaps a little bit more besides, that there's plenty for everyone to enjoy together for our bring and share lunch. See, we've been talking about vision this morning. And we're trying to paint a bit of a clearer picture as to the direction that together we're looking to travel in over these coming weeks, months, and over the next years together. What we're aiming for, what we're believing God for. But for all of this to happen, and, and this is the really challenging bit now, it's going to come at a cost. It's going to come at a cost. I've already mentioned those four words, faith and trust and sacrifice and commitment, all things that are an essential part of living the Christian life, aren't they? We put our faith in a God that we can't see. We trust him at his word. We make the sacrifices that are necessary and we commit ourselves to, to following him and living for him in the world around us that is so often at enmity towards him and the things that we believe. And so faith and trust and sacrifice and commitment are really important. But there's another thing too that all this requires, not just for this to, or for us to continue the things that we already do, but for us to really take the work forward. And that's finance. And this is the bit that makes me the most unpopular now. But hey, I'm the lead pastor. This is what I get paid to do for little bits like this. And if you're a guest here today, we don't often talk about money. Okay, so you've just chosen a morning to come where there is a little bit of a talk about money, but we're not a church that is always after people's money. We just believe that as we honor God with the things that he's given us, God blesses us in the process. Because to not only continue what we already have, but to see us get to where we need to be, as I've said, there is a gap. And I've said... When I took over, when I stepped up into the first chair almost five years ago now, I said that I would always be honest and transparent when it comes to finance. If you've seen the annual reports, you'll see that we're not a small church with not a small budget. It's getting very close over last year to half a million pounds, which is a fair-sized amount. Some of you might be in big organizations where you're talking where you deal with millions all the time but for us almost half a million pounds is a fair sized budget and in the main over the past year as we've done over the past number of years we've done really well considering the additional costs that we incurred last year some were anticipated some took us by surprise 2019 was a really good year and please believe me when I say that we're very careful when it comes to stewarding what we have and, and how we look after the finances and on that note I just want to say a huge thank you to Clive Batho, who does such an amazing job as treasurer. <laughs> who in an instant is always able to give me an up-to-date picture as to where we're at with our finances when I ask him. Very often the times when he's not in working, <laughs> but when he's at home. And, and also to John Croucher, who looks after the gift aid, and Joyce Salisbury as well, who comes in and helps with the finance and the payroll. Thank you, all of you, for the amazing work that you do. Come on, let's give him some applause. And I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who give financially to the work of Lakeside. Because without your giving, there is no way that we would be able to accomplish anywhere near as much as what we're able to and what we've been able to do over the past year. Let me just give you a few figures. 2019, that's how much income with the gift aid allowances that we get. If you don't gift aid, please do because it's free money in that sense, at no extra expense to you, but as long as the government keep dishing it out, we want to keep taking that where we can. So 2019, the giving overall was 267,262 pounds. If my maths are correct, that's a 7% increase on 2018. So thank you for your amazing generosity. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. 
Honestly, so much of that was given sacrificially, and only heaven knows the cost that that was for each of you. But we have challenges for the year ahead. I've already mentioned the church planting has incurred costs with that. I have managed to secure a grant from headquarters towards the setup costs, but there are going to be ongoing costs for that for us to reach people. This building that we're in, as great as the facilities are, it requires ongoing maintenance and repairs. The preschool, we have a first-class team who provide a first-class service here through the week. But from July, when the kids leave, the older kids leave for primary school, that always reduces the number of kids. And this uh, particular year, in July, when they go, we're, we're left with not that many. So we've really got to work hard and pray hard, believing that we're going to get a uh, the, the sufficient number of children coming in for when we start back in September. So please pray for us all and for Vicky and the team, because they do such an amazing job. It's a first-class facility that we have here. So we're continually monitoring things and reviewing where we're at, and we're making the adjustments as necessary. But here's the more sobering part now, that when we projected the forecast for this year ahead, and we always work with that on a worst case, uh, the worst case scenario income-wise and the worst case scenario expenditure that gives us what we believe is going to be the biggest gap that we're going to have to look to fulfill and, 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 and fill through, through the year, there's, there's quite a gap. That's the bad news. That's a challenge for us. But here's the good news. I, I believe that God has it covered. See, where there's vision, there's provision. That's not just a nice little fancy quip. I believe that when anyone steps out to do something for God's kingdom, that God always provides the necessary resources in order to see that come to pass. And I say God has it covered, and I really believe he has. And we've been here before, and we've ended the year in surplus, which is just... Only God who can do that. But the way I believe he has it covered in the main is through you and me. Not as many amens for that bit. (laughs) The way he has it covered in the main is through you and me. Through our giving, through our tithes, and through our offerings. Yes, here comes the money talk. If you're a guest or you're not a Christian, just ignore what I'm about to say doesn't apply to you. This is for all those who class Lakeside as their church, as their home. As a church, as a movement, we believe in the principle of the biblical tithe, giving back a tenth of what we receive, bringing it back into God's storehouse, which is the church, that helps us do all that we do. I can't force you to give in this way. I would never seek to do that. All I can do is teach you on what I believe is true to Scripture. You have to determine how you respond to that because at the end of the day, it's not me you'll stand and give an account to, it's him, as will be the case for myself. All I know is that when we apply what Scripture teaches and when we live in obedience to that, that we receive the blessing of God over our lives. And that's not just about money, that's about everything. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. But I believe that works corporately as a body of believers together that as we do this, as we seek to honor and obey him, that we receive the corporate blessing that he has for us. And I don't know about you, but I want his blessing over my life and the life of my family. And I also want his blessing over this town and over this church. Now, we've got 258 adults, as I said before, who I believe call Lakeside their home, their church. And that continues to slowly increase. They're not here every week. But on average, they're here at least once a month for the vast, and for the vast majority, they'd be here at least maybe one Sunday a month or engage with us through the, the week, through the month in some kind of meaningful way. My belief is that if we all practiced this principle of the tithe, that there would be more than enough to not only fulfill the current demands, but plenty more for what God would have us step into in the days that lie ahead. How do we look to fill this gap? Well, the suggestion's been made at times that we take up a gift day offering. And personally, for me, I'm I'm not a huge fan of that. I'd I'd much rather have a steadier stream of regular giving that enables us to steward what comes in and goes out each month. It helps us in that sense. So here's my alternative suggestion that I believe is so easily achievable because I don't just want to give a problem. I want to try and give some kind of solution 
to it as well. If every one of those 258 adults gave an extra £10 a month, just £10 a month, sacrificing a couple of Costa coffees maybe, or a takeaway, one a month, that would increase our overall giving over the year by just under £31,000. That's a phenomenal amount of money, isn't it? Just from a small amount. You can do the maths, an extra £15 a month takes it up to over £45,000 a year. Now we're in surplus. And to me, that's very achievable and very realistic. And it's a way that enables us not to be having to worry as much about the finances as we go through the year, and instead we can invest more of that energy into looking at ways that we continue to extend our reach and our influence and our impact across our town to reach people with the gospel, which at the end of the day is our primary goal. That's our raison d'etre. That's what we're here for. It's the reason for why we exist. Here's my ask, okay? I'm asking us all to examine our hearts and to look at what we give and how and where we can look to increase that through this year. That's all I can do to you. You know, what might have been a sacrifice in terms of your giving last year might not be a sacrifice this year. We've got the Heart for the House scheme, which purely goes to paying off the mortgage. Any extra amount that comes in designated for that purely goes for that. And that's great as well. That's another way by which extra income can come in and it doesn't have to come out of the general funds. But either way, we need to look to get the income up. It's great talking about vision, the things that we want to do, but there is a cost to it. We're going to keep working on keeping the expenditure down as best and as much as we can. But I'm just pulling it out to you today as the church here at Lakeside to consider what you give and is there ways that you can increase your giving through the year. And I'm more than happy to chat to any of you about this in person, as is Clive and any of the guys on the leadership team too. So as I finish, maybe the band can come back up because we are going to share communion together this morning. So I know it's going on just a little bit. Please forgive me, but I thought if we're staying around for lunch afterwards, you can allow us just the extra little bit because we wanted to share all these things this morning. As I feel, as I finish, here's the questions that I just sense God might be asking us, asking myself these, like when I talked about the gap before. What's in your hand? What's in your house? What's in your heart? Maybe God would say to you today, will you give it to me? Will you trust me with it? Will you allow me to use it and to multiply it? To bring blessing to someone else? See, the truth is that Jesus hasn't invited us all into a life of comfort and ease but one of surrender and commitment and sacrifice. And it's these things that I'm asking you for today. And please be assured that I would never ask you to do anything that I'm not prepared to do myself. We're going to share communion together. Maybe the stewards can just gather around the table. But if you're willing to respond to him today this is an appeal to the church to those of you who call lakeside your home if you're willing to respond to what you've heard him saying i'm not asking you to identify to which area you're responding that's between you and him you can come and talk to us if you want to but if you're want to if you're going to say to him today lord i am all in for this i am all in for this i'm going to ask you to respond very simply by standing where you are If it helps, I'm standing. (laughs) Saying, Lord, I'm in this. I'm going all in for this, Lord. I'm going to do what it takes. I'm going to give you what you require of me. Because it's all about you. Don't do it from some emotional response. Only if your heart is truly in this, would would you stand with me? Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're here. Thank you that you're, we're on a mission together. Yes. Thank you that we're 
involved in the, the co-mission. Lord, that means we're not doing this in our own strength. We're, we're doing it with you. We're partnering with you. Lord, you've already gone ahead of us. You're leading the way and we're, you're just asking us to walk with you and come alongside. And Lord, you see our response today. Thank you for every person who calls Lakeside their home. Thank you for the part that they play. Maybe for the part they're about to play. Lord, we're excited about what can be. We pray today for the people of banks just up the road. Lord, we're so excited. Thank you for this opportunity that you're giving to us to, to go in there and partner with the other churches, to partner with the people there, Lord, to, to come and help them find new life in you. And Lord, we're asking for your blessing upon it. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that in 12 months time as we stand here at the, towards the start of 2021, that Lord, we'll be able to look back and give a massive shout because of the people who are now in your kingdom because of what you've opened up for us to go there and be able to do. And Lord, together as churches, as one church in that village, that we would see a revival take place, that we'd see people come to find you. Lord, we give you thanks this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, as we're talking about sacrifice and commitment, Lord, as we come around this table this morning, we're, there's no greater reminder to us of what those things look like in practice. Lord, there was no greater gap that anyone could ever fill than the gap that you filled on our behalf. That when we were lost in our trespass and sin, that we, when we had no hope of finding a way forward, when we had no hope of bridging that gap that existed between mankind and you, our holy heavenly Father, that you sent your son Jesus to come and bridge that gap for us and that through what he did on the cross, you created a place that we can walk across to know you, to be reconciled to you. And to that end, we say thank you this morning. Thank you that you allowed your body to be broken. Thank you that you allowed your blood to be shed. Thank you that you were so committed to the cause of redeeming mankind that you would not let anything stand in the way of making that happen and making that invitation to us available. And we give you thanks and we give you praise this morning. And Lord, as we take these emblems, we rejoice in our heart and we say thank you to you. And maybe you're here this morning and you've never given your heart to Jesus and you've heard something about who he is and the way that he drives us and motivates us to, to not hold on to this message of freedom and this message of hope to ourselves, but we want to go all out to share this with others. Maybe you're here today and you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus. And just as we share communion together this morning, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you allowed your body to be broken and your blood to be shed so that I can know you and know God as my heavenly father. And today I confess I don't understand everything there is to know about you, but I know that I need fresh hope. I know that I need a new start in my life, that I've done things wrong and that I need that hope to become real in my life. And today I surrender my life to you. And I ask you to come and forgive me of the things I've done wrong and to give me that brand new start and to help me to live for you and to know you. Lord, I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just close your eyes for a moment and bow your heads. And then we're going to share communion. But if there's anyone here this morning who's prayed that prayer, who've said, yes, I want to be included in that prayer. You're praying that for the very first time. Would you do something for me? Just very quickly. If that's you, would you put your hand up for me just so I can see it? I'm looking around. Just put your hand up high so I can see that. You're saying yes to Jesus. Is there anyone this morning? Okay. Don't leave here without coming and talking to us if you, if you want to find out more. But Father, we thank you for your body that was broken. Thank you for this cracker that just reminds us of the lengths that you went to for us, how much you love us. Thank you that you told us to eat this, to do this in remembrance of you. 
Thank you for your precious blood that you shed. That reminds us that our sins have truly once and for all been forgiven. And Lord, this morning as we, as we share these simple emblems together, thank you, Father, for the unity that exists here within this church. Thank you for that clarity of mission and vision that lies ahead. And Lord, we're asking that you would help us in these days to come to, to trust you more, to exercise greater faith and dependency upon you because we know we can't do this in our own strength. Lord, we are totally reliant upon you. And so we say, Holy Spirit, help us. Fill us afresh. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you're sharing communion, if you can pray for one of Katie's friends called Sammy. She's just had a little baby, but she's just found out that she's got cancer. And so just remember Sammy in your prayers this morning. That would be really, really helpful. The team are going to lead us in this song as we share communion. If you know and love the Lord Jesus, we invite you to share this with us this morning.
Now to him, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine or think according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church Amen. and through all generations to come. Father, we honor you, we thank you, we bless you and we praise you. Bless the food to our bodies that we're about to enjoy in a short while we pray and the fellowship that we enjoy with one another. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Nice and wake you upstairs for some drinks. Love to share with you.